bought myself a tripod to go walking with and uh, make videos for YouTube, mainly because uh, during the last year, my daughter's been doing uh, she's been doing her A levels. So, the kind of noise I make, you doing YouTube videos isn't really uh, helpful. So I laid off. Parked in a town called Clenefford over there. I've been here before. I uh, probably took me half an hour trying to find it once I got off the main road. Sat and have goes berserk. Snowden up there in the background. Oh, the wood that as the Welsh call it. Now I'm in a park, Glen Effort. So, I'm on roundabout, uh, 10 miles south of Abergelly, which is one of them North Wales coast, coastline towns. And uh, it's a roasting hot day, you don't seem to get many like this in this part of the world. So if you're thinking, why, why do you really bother coming out here? North Wales coastline, Point of Air, all those, um, all those windmills, wind turbines. Um, press that and down there. Moily Plas, Loyal Vama, up there, Clifton Hills. It's a little town of Park then down there, Clin Clinevid, I think. So you can see why it was a bit awkward to get here, because I'm not in the middle of a uh, farmland countryside. So I come out the other day, you know, the, we were further over that way to the uh, to the east of where I am now, over uh, Office Dyke for a while, over a hill called Moyley Plas and then Moyle Gwy. And uh, it didn't just get wet, it didn't just rain, it was just every, every walk was a squelch. So I'm over the other side of the hill and uh, you can see where I'm going to walk now. Uh, down to that white house down there, and there should be a river. Not liking the look of those cows in that field. <laughs> should be a river, and uh, it takes me back down this way, across the river, walk across the fields, and then join the road over there, and walk back round to the other side of the hill. So my wife and daughter have gone away to uh, Denmark this weekend. A uh, bit of a girls weekend, leaving me on my own to debauch. So I had a look at the weather forecast and thought, let's head down to North Wales for some serious walking debauchery. But um, like I say, I haven't made many uh, YouTube vids for a while. Um, so, here we are. I felt the need to start making some again. Like I say, my daughter's been doing her A-levels, which is the last um, 
kind of English step before you head into university. And she's off to uh, Nottingham, Nottingham University, Clifton campus in September to study um, English. Must be excited. First time she'll have left home properly. I did this I did uh, I did a degree in music and English literature. So uh, I did warn her if she took English she'd either take the step into teaching straight after that or she might even go into journalism. I don't really know where she could go. If anyone can tell me, let me know. <laughs> But uh, I've been teaching for nearly 15 years full time and uh, the current state of affairs with funding and whatever, it's not too clever an industry to go into. Um, an honourable one, but um, not really rewarded with any, uh, uh, in, a, in a monetary sense. And society kind of seems to deem it necessary to blame teachers for all sorts of problems in society at the moment. So, I said to her, <laughs> probably not teaching. But I think that's how she'll end up. I kind of hope she does too. So, um, anyway, back to YouTube. And I noticed the um, the chicken girl, I've forgotten her name, she built the Rory telly. Um, she made a video saying her internet wasn't accessible. So don't expect to see her for a few days. And then she made a follow-up video saying um, didn't have any internet for a few days and now it's back on. I realised I liked it without the internet. So she's going to uh, give YouTube a miss for a while. I can understand that, I haven't been off it for six months. And uh, It feels to me like a lot of the, um, the, the guitar content has gone repetitive and sometimes quite negative. And there's a lot... I mean, it always has been, but... Let's talk Nam. Let's talk sales. And I'm thinking, well... So, so I find it difficult to watch YouTube videos. And I teach guitar. And I have done really for over 20 years. I've been qualified, fully qualified teacher since 2007. Uh, I first started teaching in schools in 1999 and just as a, um, a, I don't know, peripatetic guitar tutor, someone who travels from place to place. I had one school initially um, and then I became qualified and it's pretty much what I do full time. Um, and it does crop up now and again that, that a YouTube channel will catch my eye for, for, you know, someone's guitar YouTube channel for various reasons. And I might say to one or two students, go and have a look at this fella's um, videos. M mostly because there's something that he does that uh, illustrates a point that I've been trying to make. Um, so... See, initially I was I was a Led Zeppelin Deep Purple type learner, and um, I started to learn the guitar from um, there's an album called We Sold Our Soul for Rock and Roll. It was in the house, um, of just like Black Sabbath Greatest Hits with Paranoid and all that sort of thing on it. And after a while, I realised that there was um, There was a common thread running through the material and uh, I thought this sounds really good and I, 
obviously once you once you get to learn a few a few bits and pieces it becomes obvious that um what you've actually come across is the pentatonic scale which is what a lot of what um sabbath did tony iomi scales and uh, solos pentatonic scale and um uh, those riffs pentatonic riffs and um I didn't think the, the the purple stuff and the, the Zeppelin stuff was as accessible, so until later on. But one thing that did happen in the process was uh, I went to school, I spoke to the head of music, I said, "Can I have guitar lessons in school?" And uh, one good thing about the summer, when you go walking on days like this, is you can just wear a t-shirt and shorts. <laughs> So you get to a passageway like the one I've just been to and you get covered in like 10,000 nettle stings and thistles and brambles and fucking bastard shite like that. My legs are bitten to bits. <laughs> so I went to this music teacher and uh, Mr Booth his name was. So can I have guitar lessons in school? I thought it'd be a bit of, make a bit of an easier life if uh, getting me grips, getting to grips with the guitar, which was this rampant mystery sitting in my bedroom, um, obstinate piece of wood with little little metal lines all across it. And looking, I guess used to look at it, thinking what? And uh, so he said, I can't, I can't give you, I can't facilitate guitar lessons in school. He said, what I can do is uh, help you with this. And he gave me a French horn. And uh, so that was the end of that, really. But what he did say was, um, he said, I've got this book from, uh, um, there's, a, there's a, a guitarist called Frederick Node. And he's written this book. And he, he said, you can borrow this book, which I did. And... Uh, it was kind of it was it was basically how to play classical guitar. When I say classical guitar, I mean that kind of um, first position, second position, third position, one, two, three, four fingerings. You know where you, where you fit, and if second position, your first finger goes on the second fret, middle finger on the third, third finger on the fourth, fifth finger on the on the. Uh, sorry, fourth finger on the on the fifth fret, and so on. It just goes on like that. Every time you move along the fingerboard, I mean that doesn't apply 100% of the time, but as a general rule, it really works. And uh, also the PIMA approach: pulgar, thumb, indices, mini, annula. Um, so. I don't know if I'm going the right way now, but looks as though, looks as though it does, just like it is. I might have to stop in a minute and check on my map, but um, in fact I'm going to do that now. Okay, so we're on the right way, heading down towards the river, which I can hear the river, just can't see it yet. Um, so, I'm in this kind of woodland area, and there's bright sunlight everywhere, and so the camera can't really contrast very well between them. Uh, if it can, I don't know how to set it for that. <laughs> so anyway, so this Frederick Notebook I had, solo guitar playing, um, I learned how to approach fingering properly, and... Uh, and so I learned how to approach finger and properly, um, which was unusual because at that time uh, I, st I still wasn't that good at it, but I had some idea of, a, of an approach which I thought was uh, fairly useful. There were other people in the school who, who were learning to play, and we formed this like little gang of guitar players, and. Uh, we learnt a lot of each other, taught each other 
every, everyone had a song that someone else didn't know, so which was useful. But um, it's all really just bits and pieces. And as as time went by, when I left school and I carried on playing, it was all uh, snippets of material from you know from magazines or or stuff that I learned by ear, or maybe bump into someone who knew how to play something. And uh, bloody hell. How am I going to get over there? There's a natural ditch here and it's flooded. I need to find some way to cross it. But anyway, the point of all this, eventually I went to um, university, as I said before, and my professor, Pratt, his name was, he said, we're going to have to send you for some uh, formal uh, guitar lessons. And I'm like, I don't need such a thing. And so I went to this fella in, in town in Liverpool, in this little studio upstairs he had. And this teacher I had was there. Uh, he was a kind of... He put me through this cathartic process whereby I had to get there um, for one o'clock on a Saturday. And... Um, He'd give you the piece to learn and say, okay, um, these are the fingerings for this, these are the fingerings for this, these are the fingerings for this. Do you think you could get through eight bars for next week? And so that's how the process went on. So over the 12 week course of lessons, I managed to learn quite a few pieces. See, because I'd used the notebook, solo guitar playing. Um, earlier on in my life and I kind of recognised the uh, the notation in, in a better way than I thought I, I could which was nice I couldn't read fluently but I could scrupulously work out what was going on and when and where and so I learned a few um, back I learned some back stuff and which I wasn't that keen on and also um, some Tariga, which was in the node. Uh, a couple of Tariga uh, preludes, they're called. Kind of warm up pieces or pieces with a, you know, uh, a lesson attached. Um, so you could learn some basic idea. Uh, Tariga was, was really good at, at teaching in that respect. And his pieces are fabulous. And uh, so, and what I used to do, this teacher was, uh, he'd say to me, right, can you play your way through this? And I'd say, yeah, it's not a performance standard. So he'd say, go on then. So I'd play, and his method of critique was, uh, while I was playing the piece, when there was an error in me playing, you go, <laughs> and you think, fucking, and you just carry on, and then a couple of bars later, you go, and you're like, fuck. So this went on for a while, and uh, I mean, over a period of weeks, and especially the back piece, which was from uh, a one of one of back cello um, sonatas, and. Uh, or cello suite, I should say. There's a lot of those adapted for guitar. Um, and I was, <laughs> I was at the point where I was getting down there, thinking, if he does that today, and when I'm playing, if he goes, I'm going to punch him. And uh, I didn't. They would have kicked me out of university. But 
I did I did go in one day feeling really defensive and knowing that I'd um, practiced a lot I didn't want to hear any of that going on like like he'd been like he'd been bitten by a wasp or something stung by a wasp so I played this back uh, cello piece and he didn't do it once and at the at the end of the piece he said that was really good and I was like oh my god <laughs> and uh well, coupled with that and the and the Tariga pieces and the Spanish Romanza which is like in every um classical guitarist's armory you know I was in, I was in and I had I had all the right sort of uh, knowledge. Uh, look at this river. Wow. I'm, I'm trying to show you the river and point at myself. Gorgeous place. I was lucky the other day when we sat off the other day and we got soaked. Within the first 200 yards, there was a tawny owl flew out the trees and uh, I saw one today but from the car and there's one over there. I just there's no point in me pointing the um camera in it because you're not gonna see it. I can see it. It's time for me binoculars. So bearing in mind what I'd said before about um <clears throat> beginning to get a grasp of uh, the fingerings. Um if you learn any uh, uh, like classical or traditional guitar, solo guitar um the way that it's written um like say the tariga pieces or the back pieces i mean they've passed through thousands of people thousands of guitar players have, have attempted them and played them and over time uh, by this point the best fingerings for most people have already been established and if you follow the fingerings you'll probably find the piece is is a lot easier than you may have uh, first encountered when you've tried to work through it. Um, so, bearing this, bearing all this in mind, there's a, a YouTube um, channel that I have recommended to one or two of my students um, for various reasons, and he comes out with this video really annoys me when I see these YouTube people who think they're teachers and they don't teach the correct bar chords they don't teach the correct bar chords and the correct fingerings and they're encouraging shortcuts like power chords and um, so on and I thought well yeah eventually as you're learning the guitar you're gonna you're gonna use a, uh, power, a bar chord now and again, um, because it's that's an integral part to the the piece that you're playing most likely. Um, a, a power chord is something different. I am um, if you try playing paranoid, the way that it's the way that it's intended. It I mean it's all what we call um, power chords which is um, basically a fifth and an octave above the root. Um, in classical music, I've, I've heard it referred to as a hollow fifth because there's no, there's no third. And the reason it's so useful in, in rock music is because if you, if you play, say, say a D chord at the fifth, fifth position on a fifth fret, bar the fifth fret with your first finger and you play what would be an A chord shape with the other three fingers and open is our, is our Tony I'll just flown across the field
Um, not sure if he was a Tony now. Might have been a red kite there. So, uh, um, the, the, the power cord in a rock sense is pretty important because if, you, if you're playing through a, an, an overdriven amp, the kind of way, the, you know, the kind of way that I only did on, on, on Paranoid, and you play the full bar chord, the full E bar chord, it would sound ridiculous because you get this kind of extra distortion, this kind of oscillation, um, which is not really conducive to rock. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna, um, it's gonna muddy the sound up basically. And so you couldn't say that this was a cheat. This is not the correct manner in which you should play because that's nonsense. to stop filming there because the woodland I was cutting through along the canal was cut back. The woodland I was cutting through along the canal had been cut back. I had to climb my way out. But that's the hill I came over. I came over on the other side, the other side of that. Went to the top, walked down past those farmhouses there, along down there and then that path over there and then down there. So I come back on this lonely Welsh road. Every fucker wants to drive down here. I have to keep turning the camera off. It drives me mental. Oh, I've got some scrapes and bruises all over me. My legs are on fire. Yeah, so like I said, I got to the bottom of the down on walk along the canal, as the map says. But then the woodland was all cut back and it just... I, just, I climbed my way out and I got to the top of the bit where I was climbing as a style. Oh, so, in that respect, I was quite lucky because it came out at the point where I was supposed to meet the road anyway. Um, it's just, I've never had a climb like that. 